Okay, so I don't want to drag this video on too excessively long. Uh, other than to say that this radio has been one of those, Aha! It works! No, it doesn't. Aha! It works! No, it doesn't. What the hell? Hey, it's working again! Ah, no, it's not. It's working! Well, it's not working properly. Yeah, it's been one of those radios. It's just been one of those, Ahahaha! Ah, pull your hair out type radios. Um, so, asking for some help. So, any guys out there that are familiar with tube radios, um, especially tube type mixing circuits. The tube type mixing circuit in this thing is kicking my ass and it's an it's a weird one to start with um not really this the type oscillator used in most cb radios it's kind of a an oddball one so for starters it's a hammerland cb23 this is a customer's radio he sent it in had uh some dead channels that was taken care of the uh, crystals um electrolytic capacitors have been replaced and a couple of the uh, high wattage resistors that were a little bit on the baked side. And one uh, paper filter cap right here. So you can see that work's all been all been done. So you know, a couple high wattage resistors here. Some of the dropping resistors for the high voltage power supply. Um, new electrolytic caps. The original can cap is still up top. It's just been disconnected and everything's been done with individual electrolytics here. But uh, so the radio was... Well, easiest way to show you. That frequency counter is attached to the BK1040 over there that is attached to the output of this radio. So, signal comes out, the back of the radio goes into the BK1040, has a built-in attenuator specifically for frequency counters. And this is where I initially noticed that there was a problem. Key the microphone, and we're on channel 13 down here. Hmm, it's not even going to read right, is it? Uh, it's probably because I got this scoop hooked up in here. Yeah, there we go. 25.365, eh, don't worry about the last three digits, crystal radio, so <laughs> um, frequencies, because there's no adjustments for frequencies inside. So, uh, But it's the main thing is 25.365. Now, a little his just really quick history on this radio. This is one of the first... Uh, not the first CBs, but one of the first true 23-channel CBs. Before this radio, and not just Hammerland, pretty much all manufacturers, before this radio, most all of your CBs were usually like 1, 3, 5, 6 channels, but they had a limited number of channels, and every channel had a receive and transmit crystal. Um, there just ain't enough quartz crystal on the planet <laughs> to go making a radio that had 23 channels with a receive and transmit crystal. So, because with 23 channels, you would have needed 46 crystals. <laughs> 23 receive and 23 transmit. So, eventually, they figured out how to mix signals together. And that's exactly what they do in this radio. So, they do it with 11 crystals. So, there are 8 crystals down here in the 25 megahertz range. They range from, what do we got? 25.405 to 25.315 megahertz. And that's... Uh, used for receive and transmit. Now the receive circuit does not mix with another crystal. It's that's another thing. The receive circuit's kind of oddball. Receive works, so I ain't worried about that. But it has its own little oscillator circuit. No crystal, but another oscillator circuit. <laughs> but our problems transmit. We're transmitting on 25 megahertz. And the other crystals that it mixes with. Now it's another thing. It's kind of an oddball, and a this is kind of unique to this radio. It has three bands, but it's not like a modern export radio with illegal bands. What the bands are, there's actually just, there's three rings of numbers on the channel dial. And this, this control here changes the actual channel. This one, if you watch this window, it moves up and down. Okay, so it says channel 21, channel 13, channel 5. Now every time you switch to a different band, what you're doing is is switching to a different crystal. So in the low band, it's this crystal. In the mid middle band, it's this crystal. In the high band, it's this crystal. And then when you change the channel selector, what you're selecting is the mixing crystal down here. So, but the 25.365 megahertz frequency you're seeing there, if we go to the service manual, now this is a copy, if you want to look up the schematic online, I think they're online. I actually just copied. I actually have an original 
Yes, slightly moth-eaten, <laughs> but uh, an original service manual for this radio. So, And I, I never use those manuals. I always make copies. But if you look at the mixing scheme here, channel 13 mixes with the 25.365 megahertz. And look at the frequency counter again. 25.365. Aha! So, now, you know, if you work on radios, you'd know that, ah, well, that's simple enough. This crystal's not working, or this oscillator circuit, so, you know, the 1.65 megahertz, 1.75, or 1.85 megahertz. Actually, the same problem. It doesn't matter what band you're on, you're transmitting in 25 megahertz range. Excuse me. So, that's what I thought, initially. Well, it actually appears the oscillator circuits are working just fine. So, and here's where it gets strange. You hook up an oscilloscope to the output. So we're hooked up directly to coax cable. It hooks up to the output jack. And you can see, now I have the span set, so it's actually easy to view a, an actual waveform of the 1.75 megahertz. So it's really scrunched together because that's actually the 25.365 megahertz we're looking at. But if you notice, there's a little bit of ripple there. Well, that ripple, there just happens to be as many bumps in that ripple as there is waveforms if you're looking at, and I'll switch over to the 1.75 megahertz right here. There's the 1.75. So you can see we have one, two, three, about four and a little bit of a waveform showing there. Well, that's if we go to the input of the RF final tube. So I've now moved the scope probe to this point right here. So here's the RF, the out final tube. Here's the driver. Comes out, there's a coil, and then this is the final tube. So I've got the scope probe hooked up right here at the input to the RF final tube. Look over there at the scope again. Key the microphone. Well, it looks like a 100%, actually it looks like a 100% modulated signal. Well, that's not actually what you're looking at. What you're looking at is 25.365 megahertz and a 1.75 megahertz, because if you count how many little, basically, balls there are there, there's four and a little bit, which is exactly the same amount as the when we had the scope hooked up directly at the 1.75 megahertz uh, oscillator circuit. So, both oscillators are working. Here is actually, if I connect my scope probe, right here to pin 9 of V102, for the focus. So if I hook the scope probe up right here, that's what you're looking at right there. That's the 25.365 megahertz signal coming for the the 25 megahertz oscillator. If we come to this one point, whichever, you know, depends on the crystal. In this case, we have it in the center band, the 1.75 megahertz. I slide that over to pin 9, so I now have the scope probe attached right here. Pin 9 of V101. Now, this is the transmit oscillator, and that's the only time this is active, so I have to key the microphone for you to see that, so key the mic. And there's our 1.75, and we can see we've got 50, what, 52.8 volts. So, I mean, we've got a huge signal. Hell, we've got two to three times more uh, 1.75 megahertz than we do of the 25 megahertz signal down here. Um, it's It just doesn't... Now, when you mix frequencies, you end up with sums and differences. So if you take... If you had a 1 megahertz and... Uh, 3 megahertz signal. You mix those together. You end up with a 1 megahertz, a 3 megahertz, a 4 megahertz, and a 2 megahertz. Because they, when they mix together, you end up with the sums. So if you add them both together, if you add 1 and 3, that's 4. And the differences, if you subtract, so 1 and 4 subtracted, would be 3. And then you also had the 1 and the, three, the, the original 3 megahertz. So Normally what you'll do is, is you'll mix two signals together, and then with a, a, a filtering network, some coils, a tuned, a tuned circuit, you'll only allow the signal you want to pass through. So, here's the signal as it comes out from the 1.75, because we're only, we're con let's, yeah, just for the sake of this argument, we're not going to check all three. They all three do the same thing. So that 1.75 megahertz signal ends up coming down here, okay? Comes across, ends up going into the... Now this, as you can see here, is listed as the Receive Transmit First Mixer. And then you follow down here, the signal comes up from this 25 megahertz oscillator, comes up right here and goes in to the same tube. Now, the output that we'd want to see 
um, coming out, we want to see getting to, because you can see that goes over and ends up going to the driver. Okay, so that's the RF driver, and there's our RF final. What we'd want to see normally going to an RF driver is going to be, if you're on channel 13, would be 27.115. Uh, the idea of the mixer is that it mixes the signals together. In this case, you want to sum the 25 plus the one point, whatever, you know, the two signals you mix together, you want them to add together, because that sums up to the CB frequency you want to transmit on. And then the, the rest of it shouldn't make it through. There's something wrong with this oscillator. It's not working properly. But it is transmitting on CB, because you're, you, you, like I say, you turn on a, a monitor radio. So I turn on a radio over here. Audio. Turn the volume up a little bit more. Audio, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, audio. Now that's a, a bench radio set on channel 13. So if we actually look up here the spectrum analyzer, though, this is where it really gets interesting. So that is 25 megahertz. That is the actual channel 13 CB frequency. So it's the 20... 20 5.365 megahertz right there plus 1.75 megahertz and minus 1.75 megahertz. So there's our problem. We can hear it on a monitor CB radio because it is mixing together a little bit. But look at the difference. We should not have this huge spike at 25.365 megahertz. We want it to mix together and all that crap to be gone. The only thing we should have is that, and that should be way up there. That should be a really big signal. It shouldn't be small. So, and I'm stumped. It's, it, you know, it's one of those, I don't know what the hell's happening in this thing. Um, you know, so if we, I'll hook up next, I'll hook the scope probe up to, let's say, right here at pin 6, which is the input to the, receive transmit first mixer so that's one uh, that's 102 and what I say pin six so nine eight seven eight seven six all right obviously ain't right how the hell am I on here no my health I was on the right two nine eight seven six key the microphone now that's actually what I would expect to see at the input. Slightly deformed, yeah, the signals will do that. But if you can see, there's one, two, three, four, and a little bit. So that's the 1.75 megahertz right there, the going up like that. But if you notice, it's really sharp or sawtooth looking. That's because there's also a 25.365 megahertz signal there as well. And that, like I say, that's right at the input of the mixer tube. Because that's where both of those signals, the signal from this oscillator and this oscillator, come together right here and go into the mixer. What we are, we're mainly interested in is what's coming out, pin 1 here. So if I switch the scope probe over to pin 1, key the microphone. Well, actually we see there's basically 1, 2, 3, 4, and a little bit, and it's still jagged. So... It, it mixed together, but yeah, but you're thinking, yep, okay, yeah, but it hasn't gone through the filtering and whatnot. What does it actually look like at the input to the driver? So if we go to pin 1, because right now I have the scope probe attached right at pin 1 on this tube. So if we actually switch to the input, which is pin 1 on this tube, the driver, get that switched over here. A bit of light, so I'm not shorting stuff out down here. Or after all, dealing with some high voltage. <laughs> Key, yeah, I gotta change the voltage now. So that's what's going into the driver. You can see it's clearly the 25.365, but we still have those little bumps. That's because there's the 1.75 uh, megahertz. So it's like it's it's mixed together, but it never the 25 megahertz has never been filtered out. It's and these these are double tuned. These two uh, IF cans here, these transformer cans. You can see they're double cored. They have a top and a bottom. Um, 
these cores down here have absolutely nothing to do with the transmit circuit. The, during the alignment, those two are tuned for the receiver circuit. These up here, they're tuned for the, uh, the RF transmit circuit. But uh, if anybody has any suggestions, I'm kind of... I don't know what the hell to think here. <laughs> like I say, I, I saw it initially, the 25 megahertz down here at that. I knew I had a problem. I've been pulling my hair out trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with this thing. And then I happened to turn a CB radio. I can't remember what I did first. Either turned a CB radio on or uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer. can't remember which I did. But that's when I noticed. I was like, oh, well, I do have CB. And that's, I think it's actually the monitor radio. I turned on a monitor radio. And I was like, well, shit, I can hear myself. So actually it's working fine. Well, like I say, then I went a little bit farther, turned on the spectrum analyzer, and I thought, oh, crap, I've got the, the 25 megahertz is the huge signal. The signal that we want, the CB channel, is actually, you know, is that little guy down there, which isn't doing us much good and definitely not going to get out very far. But, uh, yeah, so for some reason, it's not getting mixed together, and, you know, this, is, this signal here should be way up here. This signal here should be pretty much non-existent, and the same with that. That should be pretty much non-existent. So, yeah, this thing's got problems, and I'm just kind of... I don't know if one of these transformers, possibly. Um, now, here's the thing that makes it even worse. I've got several of these radios. Now, most of them are parts chassis, uh, or in need of restoration. But I do happen to have one that works. <laughs> Now, I've never restored one of these personally for myself. Like I say, this radio belongs to a customer. Um, but I pulled my one that I know works, because I had gotten it. I would never really tested it that far, other than to plug it in, brought it up on a Variac, and keyed the microphone, look on it a watt meter, yep, has power, switched over to the antenna, receives fine. Never tested any farther than that. Well, I put it on the bench. I'll be Pardon my French, but I'll be goddamned if it isn't doing the exact same thing that this radio is doing. It receives fine, just like this radio does, but it transmits almost all of its power on whatever... Whichever 25 megahertz crystal happens to be selected, it transmits, it looks... You, know, you look at it on the spectrum analyzer, looks just like that. Big spike at 25 megahertz, very small signal at whatever the CB channel is you're on, and another one at the difference, you know, on the minus side. So... Yeah, I not only have one, the customers, I have two, the customers and my own radio doing the same blasted thing. And I've never done anything to the one that I own, like I say, other than just to power it up and go, yep, it turns on, works, I'll get around to it one of these decades. Well, hell, it's doing the same blasted thing. Uh, so, if anybody's got any, you know, experience working on these Hammerlin CB23s and run into a similar problem with uh, this weird mixing circuit problem... I'd be interested in your thoughts, because <laughs> uh, my sanity could use a little bit of help.